Hi everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about 3D sound. Let's roll the introduction and let's get right into it. Sample project here where we're just using the normal audio play sound. For example, if we open up this object, you can see we just have it here and we're playing the sound clip, which you can find in the variable definitions. We're using the same object for also music, so we need to make sure that things can be repeatable. Now, when we want the audio to come from the left or right channel, we have to start digging deeper and start using 3D sound. And it's not really as bad as you think. Let's run the example project and let's give it a listen. You can see that we have three different sounds. If I come into one of them, we get hit, as well as the other side. And this is our music playing. Now, like I said, when we're using 3D sound, if we go outside, we can still hear the music, but we don't want that to happen. So let's close this and start editing the project itself. So we're going to close the object sound regular, and then we have a object sound right here. Now, this is pretty much just a skeleton where we have a create event, a draw event, which we won't even really touch here, so I'll close it. We have a step and then a destroy. I left three variables in the create event, and this is to figure out the math of basically the distance away from our listener or the audio sound that is coming from, and this will be all handled in the background by GameMaker Studio 2. Now, because of the way that I'm going to be doing collision, normally what I would do is I would come in here, add an event, and say, when I collide with my player, then I want to play a sound. However, I'm going to keep my collision inside my step event here, so I need to add a variable in the create event to tell me that my object has collided. I'm going to be using a boolean called already been hit, and I'll make sure the default is set to false, and we will trigger this on and off once our player goes inside of the circle. Now, when we are using sound in 3D, we have to create an emitter. All the emitter is going to do is it's going to tell GameMaker Studio that we need to emit a sound on this particular object. So we can go ahead and create a emitter object or emitter variable and then assign it whatever ID gets created with the audio emitter create. The next thing I want to do is position the emitter. Normally it's going to be created at the X and Y of the object, but I'm just going to make sure that it is going to be created at the X and Y of this object. And then the last value is zero and that is the Z axis, and we're not going to worry about the Z axis in this particular video. Then we've created the audio emitter and we've positioned it. The next thing that we need to do is kind of check out the fallout model. Let me open up a browser here. According to the manual here, if we're going to add more information to the audio engine, then we have to do a little bit of math. Luckily, everything's already done for us. So basically, we have to supply the function audio fall offset with one of these constants. And you can see the graph here. It's just a visual representation of the gain in distance. Uh, this is basically going to be fooling around a lot with some values. But that's what our three variables are for at the top. We have a reference amount the maximum amount, and then the factor amount. If we look at the browser, you can see that they are using the current distance, the reference distance, and then the factor. So all those variables will be used in here. Now we're gonna make it pretty easy. So we're just gonna use a simple one. And for that, we are going to be using the exponent distance. So we'll call our audio fall off set model, and then we'll call the constant audio fall off exponent distance. And that's really all we have to do with that. The next thing we need to do is because we are going to be using the same object for both music and sound that can happen once, I'm going to write a little if statement to say, you know, what, if the sound is repeatable, then we're going to come in here and instead of doing something like audio play sound, we're going to use audio play sound at. Now, just like before, we need to pass in that sound clip and that sound clip is coming from our variable definitions. Next, we'll pass in the X and Y position on where we want to play the sound. We'll keep our Z value as zero. And now all we have to do is fill in the reference distance, the maximum diff distance, and the factor. This is what is going to be used in the mathematical equation based off the constant that we put in here. Now, the only other thing we need to do is we need to say whether or not it loops, and it does because this is a repeatable 
uh, sound, and then the priority, we'll just say priority one. Now this priority is exactly the same as any other sound in Game Maker Studio. A lower priority means that it might not get played if you're already playing too many sounds. So if you want something like the music to be something that's always played, then you would set this something to 99 or 100, just something higher than whatever you are using for your priorities. Now, because we are using an audio emitter, we have to make sure that we clean everything up. So in the destroy event, we're going to free up that emitter and just pass in the variable. Now, the only other thing that I really need to do here is I need to use the step event to do a collision. And this is going to be a super simple collision. I'm just going to paste the code in and we'll take a look at it. So I've pasted my code in and we have basically saying, is the sound repeatable? And if we set that to false, then we'll come in and we will draw a collision circle based off on that reference amount. That reference amount is currently 200 pixels. So we're going to be drawing a fairly large circle looking for the player. And if the player does happen to be inside the circle, we're going to come into this if statement. If we've already played the sound, then we'll just ignore it. Otherwise, we will play the sound, and this is the same thing as we just wrote in the create event, except we are not looping through the information. Now, the only other thing we really need to do here, and if we check out the object player in the begin step, I've already done it here. Currently, GameMaker Studio already has a listener, and it is attached to basically your camera. However, we need this to be attached to our player, and then we're just going to update the listener wherever our player is based on the X and Y and Z coordinates, and our case Z is going to be zero. So this is going to update the audio everywhere we go. So if we move over to room one, we're going to take out this music here, and we're going to add in our new sound. We'll double click, choose, the variable definitions, which is our music, and that it can be looped. And when we hit F5, now our little player, I'll start here off at the bottom here. Now you should be able to hear this if you're wearing headphones or even on the speakers. If we come in on the left side of the music, the closer we get, you can hear the music kind of ramping up and it's only on the left side. If I go over to the right side, it'll be the exact same, but for the right side. Now, if the closer we get to the purple circle, that's going to be left and right. So if I come in nice and close, you can see that or you can hear that the music is very loud now and it's on both left and right channel. Now we could do the same with the hit, but this is using just the default. If we wanted to switch it just to prove that it works, we'll take this object here. We'll use the variable definitions and let's load up a certain sound here, which is this guy. So. If I load up my game now and I get hit on the left side, I can only hear it on the left side versus if I come in from the right, I can hear it on the right speaker or right headphone instead of hearing it both extremely loud no matter where we are. So that is how you use 3D sound. And if we take a look at just a super small, simple game that I made here, this is using the things that we just talked about. You can hear the music is playing and whenever these raindrops get close to our player, we have the sound happening and it's only on the left or right channel, depends on where the raindrop falls. So that brings this tutorial to an end. I hope you've learned a few things and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you all for the support. I just moved and was able to set up my new office and getting back into the swing of things. A huge, huge, huge shout out to everyone who supported me on YouTube and a special shout out to those on Patreon. Bill, Ashby, Robert, Ian, Alex, Angel, Victor, Paul, Edward, Darth Wolf, and Annie. Once again, thank you everyone for supporting me.